Well, on factory farms, animals are treated like unfeeling commodities. They're put in cages and crates where they're packed so tightly they can't even turn around, they can't move, they can't express their physical or psychological needs. Uh, they suffer both physically and psychologically because of this, and they're heavily stressed. They suffer on a daily basis. They're in misery. Uh, to keep them alive, they have to be fed enormous amounts of antibiotics. In fact, the majority of the drugs used in the United States are fed to farm animals to keep them alive and growing in these systems. And when you visit these places, you, you really feel the pain the animals are experiencing. You feel the stress of it. Um, I've walked into these gestation crate barns where you have pigs lined up in rows in these two foot wide metal enclosures, clanking and screaming and in misery wanting out and the air is thick with toxic fumes. When you walk into these places, you, it hits you in the face, both physically as well as emotionally, and it's not a good place for animals. It's not a good place for workers either. Workers routinely suffer from respiratory problems from breathing in these noxious fumes. In fact, they oftentimes wear masks or respirators. The pigs, of course, who live in these places have no escape, and they breathe that air 24 hours a day. Um, so it's a system that's bad for animals, it's bad for people, and the good news is we don't have to do that. How we treat other animals says a lot about who we are as a species. Uh, kindness to animals is obviously good for animals, but it's also good for us. It helps to bring out our empathy, our compassion, our connection with others. And I think one of the biggest problems we have in our world is that people are disconnected from each other. They're disconnected from the earth. They're disconnected from other animals. And um, it leads to misunderstandings and then oftentimes harsh judgments. And so connecting with other animals in a positive way, um, looking into their eyes, does something to us that is very positive. Whereas working at a slaughterhouse and killing animals or otherwise abusing them also does something to us that's not good and we can choose to relate to others in a more positive way, in a mutually beneficial way. And to me, being vegan is about that. It's about creating mutually beneficial relationships and aspiring to live in a way that is as kind as possible. And, it's, and we're all works in progress. None of us is perfect. We all have things to work on, but it's an aspiration to continuously try to examine and, and do better. For, for some people who are stan eating the standard American diet and eating meat, dairy, and eggs on a regular basis, the idea of a meatless Mondays could look something like this. Uh, instead of having spaghetti and meatballs, you could have spaghetti and veggies in the marinara sauce. Or if you want something that tastes like the meatballs, there's lots and lots of plant-based alternatives now, and, and there are veggie meatballs you can get. So you can have spaghetti and meatballs and it could be vegan. So that's one thing that you can do that'd be very easy. For cereal, if you have cereal in the morning, instead of using cow's milk, you could just use soy milk or almond milk or coconut milk or oat milk or hemp milk or one of these plant-based milks. And another breakfast that's very easy and very common is oatmeal. And you can do that just with water and without any butter, but you can use a plant-based margarine. So that's an opportunity or an option if you'd like. You can also put veggies in, or, or other fruit. <laughs> you wouldn't want to put veggies probably in oatmeal, but you could put bananas, blueberries, raisins, nuts, uh, berries, uh, different kind of fruits like that in oatmeal. Um, so that might be a breakfast thing. Um, for lunch, a, a big salad. It's in, and a salad doesn't have to just be lettuce. It can be, for example, I make salads with arugula. I often add beans, different kinds of beans, whether they're garbanzo beans or pinto beans or black beans. Uh, and then uh, veggies like red peppers, cucumber, carrots, celery, and then some kind of a dressing. And I oftentimes use a goddess dressing with balsamic vinegar to make it a little lighter, or just some combination of those or other dressings you might like. So a big salad is really good to have. You could have veggie burgers, you could have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you could have hummus. I think oftentimes going to ethnic foods is a very good way for people to explore plant-based foods because historically human beings have eaten primarily plant foods. And this whole idea of eating hamburgers and animal foods on such a regular basis is fairly new. So if we go back into traditional ethnic foods, Chinese food, 
Mexican food, Ethiopian food, Middle Eastern food, Thai food, it tends to be largely plant-based. And so that's another really good way for people who are interested in trying more plant foods is to explore ethnic options. For many people, going plant-based is a series of small steps. You know, for example, eating less meat on a particular day and maybe even smaller portions of meat, and then they start replacing that with larger portions of plant foods. Some of those might be protein-based, some of those might be just more veggies and more whole grains. Um, so each person has to do what makes sense for them, but the key is to do something, and it could be very small. Um, it might just be a matter of eating more fruit. And if, for example, you eat an apple a day, like the doctors have advised for many years, you start filling up and you feel satiated so you don't have the craving to eat more unhealthy fast food or other animal or processed foods. So focusing on eating good food um, will nourish us, it will help us feel satiated, and it will prevent us in many cases from going back to the bad habits of eating fast food and other products that are not good for us.